settle down and be doing just fine till I hear an old freight rolling down the line. And when I'm gone and at my grave you stand, just say, God's gone. So mom took off for Alaska, huh? Yeah. Sort of left you in charge. Well, she knew I was coming down here, so she offered me the place. You keeping the plants watered? Yeah. Keeping the sink clean? She don't even like a single tea leaf in that sink, you know? Yeah, I know. Is she gonna be up there a long time? I don't know. It's kind of nice for you, huh? Whole place to yourself. Yeah, it's great. You got crickets anyway. And tons of crickets out there. You got groceries? Coffee? What? You got coffee? Yeah. That's good. Real coffee? And, uh, bean? Yeah, you want some? No, I, I brought some. Just help yourself to whatever. I, I will. Don't worry about me. I'm not the one to worry about. I mean, I can. Hmm. Do you always work by candlelight? No, not always. Just sometimes. Sometimes it's soothing. Isn't that what the old guys did? What old guys? The forefathers, you know. Forefathers? Yeah. Isn't, isn't that what they did? The candlelight burning into the night and cabins in the wilderness? I suppose. I'm not bothering you. I mean, I don't want to break into your concentration or nothing. No, it's all right. It's good. Yeah. I mean, I... Realize that your line of work demands a lot of the concentration. It's okay. Well, I, I guess you think I'm not fully able to comprehend something like that, huh? Something like what? That stuff that you're doing? Uh, art? You know, whatever you call it. Just a little research. Well, you may not know it, but I did a little art myself once. You did? Yeah, I did. Fooled around with it. No future in it. What'd you do? Never mind what I did. Just never mind about that. It was ahead of its time. So you went out to see the old man, huh? Yeah, I seen him. How's he doing? Same. He's doing just about the same. I was down there too, you know. Well, do you want an award? You want some kind of medal? You were down there. He told me all about you. What did he say? Don't worry, he told me. Well, you don't have to say nothing. I wasn't. Yeah, you were gonna make something up, something brilliant. Is he gonna be down here very longly? Might be, depending on a few things. What, you got some friends down here? <laughs> I know a few people, yeah. Well, you can stay here as long as I'm here, well, you know. I don't need your permission, dude. No. I mean, she, my mother too, right? Right. She might just as easily ask me to take care of her place as you. That's right. I mean, I know how to water plants. So you don't know how long you're going to be staying then, huh? 
It depends mostly on houses, you know. Houses? Houses, electrical devices, stuff like that. I gotta make a little tour first. Lee. Why don't you just try another neighborhood, all right? Why? What's the matter with this neighborhood? This is a great neighborhood. Lush, a good class of people, not many dogs. Our mother just happens to live here, that's all. Well, she's not gonna know. All people are gonna know is something's missing. She'll never even hear about this. Ain't nobody gonna know. You're gonna get picked up? You start wandering around Man, here at night? I'm gonna get picked up. What about you? You stick out like a sore thumb. Look at yourself. What, do you think you're regular looking? Huh? Look, Lee, I've got too much to deal with here to be worrying about whether you're well, running you're not gonna have to worry about me. I'm doing all right without you. Well, I haven't been anywhere near you for five years. Now, isn't that true? Yeah. So, don't worry about me. I'm a free agent. All right. Now, all I want to do is borrow your car. No. Why? Just for a day, one day? No. Well, I won't take it outside of the 20-mile radius, I promise you. You can check the speed on me. not borrowing my car, Lee. That's all there is to it. Well, then I'll just take the damn thing. Look, I don't want any trouble here, all right? That's a dumb line. Now, now that is a dumb fucking line. Do you get paid for dreaming up a line like that? Look, I can give you some money if you want some... Hey! Don't you say that to me! Don't you ever say that to me! And boy, you may be able to get away with that with the old man. Get him tanked up for a week. Pay him off with your Hollywood blood money, but not me. I get my own money, my own way. Big money. I was just making an offer. Yeah, well, keep it to yourself. Those are the most monotonous fucking crickets I've ever heard in my life. I kind of like the sound. Yeah. Supposed to be able to tell the temperature by the number of pulses, you believe that? Temperature? Yeah, the air, how hot it is. How do you do that? I don't know. Some woman told me that. She was a botanist, so I believed her. Where'd you meet her? What? A woman botanist. Met her on the desert. I've been spending a lot of time out on the desert. What were you doing out there? I forget. Had me a pit bull out there for a while, but I lost him. Pit bull? And fighting dog. Yeah, man, I made some good money off that little dog. Real good money. You could come up north with me, you know. What's up there? My family. Yeah, that's right. You got the wife and kitties now, don't you? You got the house, got the car. That's a whole slam, that's right. Spend a few days, see how you like it. Got an extra room. It's too cold up there. You want to sleep for a while? I don't sleep. The old lady was so secure to mind it. How do you mean? Well, I made a little tour this morning. She got locks on everything. Locks, double locks, chain locks. What she got that's so valuable? Antiques, I guess. I don't know. Antiques. Hmm. Brought everything with her from the old place, huh? Just the same old crap we always had around. Plates and spoons. Yeah, well, I guess they have personal value to her. Personal value, yeah. It's just a lot of junk. Most of it's phony anyway. Idaho decals. Now, who in hell wants to eat off a plate with the state of Idaho staring you in the face? 
No, every time you take a bite, you get to see a little bit more. Yeah, well, they must mean something to her, or she wouldn't say anything. Yeah, well, personally, I don't want to be invaded by Idaho when I'm eating. When I'm eating, I'm home. Do you see what I'm saying, Glenn? I'm not drifting. I'm home. I don't need my thoughts swept off to Idaho. I don't need that. You go out last night? Yeah. Thought I heard you go out. Yeah, I went out. What about it? Just wondered. Damn coyotes kept me awake. Yeah, I heard them must have killed somebody's dog or something. Yapping their fool heads off. They don't yap like that out on the desert. They howl. These are city coyotes here. Well, you don't sleep anyway, do you? You're pretty smart, aren't you? How do you mean? I mean, you never had any more on the ball than I did, and here you are, getting invited into prominent people's houses, sitting around talking like you know something. They're not so prominent. They're a hell of a lot more prominent in the houses I get invited into. Well, you invite yourself. That's right, I do. You know, in fact, I probably got a wider range of choices than you got, come think of. I wouldn't doubt it. In fact, I've been inside some pretty classy places in my time, and I never even went to an Ivy League school either. You want some breakfast or something? Breakfast? Yeah, don't you eat breakfast? Look, don't worry about me, pal. I can take care of myself. You just go right on ahead as though I wasn't even here, all right? Where'd you walk to last night? Um, uh, foothills there, San Gabriel's heat is driving me crazy. When it had out on the desert? Different kind of heat. Oh, there it's clean. Cools off at night, they're a nice little breeze. Where were you, Mojave? Uh, Mojave, that's right. I haven't been out there in years. Out past uh, Needles there. Oh, yeah. It appears different, this country's real different. Yeah, well, it's been built up. Built up? Wiped out's more like it. I don't even hardly recognize it. Yeah. Foothills are the same, though, aren't they? Yeah. Pretty much. Well, it's funny going up in there, all the smells and everything. Used to catch snakes up there, remember? <laughs> you caught snakes. Yeah. And you'd pretend you were Geronimo or some damn thing. Hey, you used to go right out to lunch. I enjoyed my imagination. Oh, is that what you call it? Looks like you're still enjoying it. So you just wandered around up there, huh? Huh? With a purpose. See any houses? Couple. A couple of real nice ones. One of them didn't even have a dog. Just walked right up, stuck my head in the window. Not a peep. Just a kind of sweet suburban silence. What kind of place was it? Well, hell, it's like a paradise, you know. It's the kind of place that sort of kills you inside. Got the warm yellow lights. I got the Mexican tile all around. Got the copper pots hanging over the stove. You know, kind of place they got in the magazine. Got the blonde people moving in and out of the rooms, talking to each other. My place sort of wish you grew up in. That's the kind of place you wish you'd grown up in? Yeah, why not? I thought you hated that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you never knew too much about me, did you? Why'd you go out to the desert in the first place? I'm on my way out to see the old man. I mean, you just passed through there? Yeah, three months of passing through there, that's right. Three months? Yeah, something like that, maybe more than one. You lived in the Mojave yeah. for three months? what's the matter with that? By yourself? Mostly. Had a couple of visitors, had that dog for a while. Didn't you miss people? Uh, people? Yeah. I'd go crazy if I have to spend three nights in a motel by myself. Well, you're not in the motel now. No, I know, sometimes I have to stay in motels. Well, they got people in motels, don't they? Strangers. Well, you're friendly, aren't you? Aren't you the friendly type? Look, I'm gonna have somebody coming by here later, Lee. Ah, lady friend? 
No, a producer. Uh-huh. Mm. What's he produce? Film, movies, you know. Movies? Motion pictures? Mm. Big week, huh? Yeah. What's he coming out here for? We have to talk about a project. What do you mean, a project? What's a project? A script. <laughs> That's what you're doing with all these papers? Yeah. Well, what is this project about? We're... It's a period piece. What's a period piece? Look, it doesn't matter. The main thing is I need to discuss this with him alone. Oh, I get it. You want me out of the picture, huh? Not exactly. I just need to be alone with him for a couple hours so we can talk. Are you afraid I'll embarrass him? I'm not afraid you'll embarrass me. Well, I'm I'll tell you what. Why don't you just give me the keys to your car and I'll have it back here around 6 o'clock. So I give you enough time. I'm not loaning you my car, Lee. No. You just want me to get lost, huh? Take the hunt. Is that it? Just pound the pavement for a few hours while you bullshit your way to a million bucks. Look, it's going to be hard enough for me to face this character on my own without worrying Wait, about... Wait, you me. don't know this guy? No. I don't know. He's a producer. I've been meeting with him for months, but you never get to know a producer. Well, you're trying to hustle him, is that it? Uh, I'm not trying to hustle him, Lee. I'm trying to work out a deal here. It's what not kind easy. of deal? Convince him it's a worthwhile story. Well, he's not convinced. How come he's coming over here if he's not convinced? I'll convince him for you. You don't understand the way things work down here, Lee. How do things work down here? If I loan you the car, will you have it back by six? On the button. With a full tank of gas. Yeah, forget about the gas. Now, well, these tanks, gas, let's go, little buddy. Remember that car I used to loan you? Yeah. 40 Ford, flathead. Mm-hmm. That sucker home last, didn't it? Lee, it's not that I don't want to loan you my car. It's you want to loan me a car? Yeah, I know. I just wish... What? What? You wish what? I don't know. I wish I didn't have to be doing business down here. I'd like to just spend some time with you. I thought it was art you were doing. Try to have it back by six, okay? No, sweet. Hey. If this story of yours doesn't go over with this guy, you tell him that I got a couple projects, he might be incident. Real commercial? Full of suspense. True to life, then. Well, to tell you the truth, Austin, I have never felt so confident about a project in quite a long time. Whoa, that's good to hear, son. I am absolutely <laughs> convinced that we can get this thing off the ground. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're gonna have to make a sale to television, and that means getting a major star, somebody bankable. But I think we can do it. I really do. Don't you think we need a first draft before we approach a star? No, no, not at all. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, maybe a brief synopsis. Hey. You know, I don't even want you to touch the typewriter. <laughs> Not until we get the seed money. That's fine with me. You know that this is a great story. I just, yeah. the story alone. You've really managed to capture something this time. Boy, I'm glad you like it, so. Because, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm really sorry, Austin. It's OK. Well, I thought it was way past six already. You said to have it back here by six o'clock. We were just finishing up. This is my brother, Lee. Oh. Well, I'm very happy to meet you. Well, I can't tell you how happy I meet you, sir. It's all Kimmer. Mr. Kipper? Kimmer. Uh, oh, so Lee's been living out on the desert for a while. Oh, that's terrific. 
Palm Springs? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, right around in that area there, near the Bob Hope Drive there. Oh, yeah, I Do love you... it there. I just love oh, it there. Yeah. The air is wonderful. Yeah, it sure is. Now, that air is healthy air. And the golf. <laughs> Of course, I don't know whether you play golf, but the golf is just about the best. Well, I play a lot of golf. Is that right? Yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, I've sort of been hoping that I'd run into somebody down here who played a little golf. I'll tell you something. I have been looking for a partner. Oh, really? <laughs> I saw Lee's just uh, down for a little visit while our mother's in Alaska. Your mother is in Alaska? Yeah. He went up there on a little vacation. This is her place. I see. Well, that's really something, huh? Alaska. <laughs> well, now, what kind of handicap do you have, Mr. Kimmer? Oh, I'm just a Sunday duffer, really, you uh -oh. know. Well, that's good, because I haven't swung a club in months. Ah, well, we ought to get together sometime and have a little game, huh? Hey, Austin, uh, do you play? Uh, no, I don't. I watched it on TV, you know. Well, how, how about tomorrow morning? Bright and early. We could get out there and put in 18 holes for breakfast. I've got several appointments. No, no, I mean real early. Crack of dawn. While the dew is still thick on the fairway. Oh, well, sounds really great. Austin could be our caddy. <laughs> That's an idea, huh? <laughs> I don't know the first thing about golf. So. Oh, God. There's nothing to golf. Isn't that right, Sal? He could pick golf up and what? 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Sure, it doesn't take mm -hmm. long. Of course, you got to play for years to find your true form. <laughs> well, we'll give him a quick rundown on the club faces, you know, the irons and the woods, and show him a couple pointers on the basic swing. Now, I'll tell you what, we might even let you hit the ball a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Saul? Oh, sure, it sounds great. I haven't had any exercise in weeks. Now, see? That is the spirit. We will have a shot of orange juice right afterwards. Orange juice? Yeah, vitamin C. I'll tell you what, there is nothing like a shot of orange juice after a round of golf. Hot shower, snapping towels at each other's privates. You know, just get that real sense of fraternity there. <laughs> you make it sound very inviting, I must say. It really sounds great. <laughs> well, great. Then it's a date? Well, I'll call the country club and see whether I can arrange something. Great. <laughs> Boy, I, oh, I, I sure am sorry, though, that I busted in on y'all in the middle of your meeting. No, 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 it's perfectly all right. Oh, no, we were I, just about finished. I can wait out in the no, other room. No, really, it's fine. Are, are you sure? I Absolutely. just got Austin's color TV back from the shop. I could watch a little amateur boxing now or something. Ah, I see. So, you don't fool around on television, do you? <laughs> well, I have in the past. Produce some TV specials, <laughs> network stuff. It's mainly features now. Now, that's where the big money is, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, why don't I uh, give you a call now so we'll get together? We're fine. Have lunch right after golf. What? We, we should have our lunch right after our golf. Oh, yeah, right. So Austin was, was telling me that you're interested in stories, is that? Well, we uh, develop certain projects that we huh? feel have commercial potential. Now, what, what kind of stuff do you go in for? You know, the usual. Good love interest, lots of action. Westerns? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I'll give you a I have got it. a Western that would knock your light out. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Contemporary Western, based on a true story. And of course, I'll tell you something. So, I'm not a writer, like the brother here. I mean, I am not a man of the pen. Well. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you a story off the tongue, but I, I can't get it down on, on paper. That don't really make no difference, though, does it? Or no, not I mean, really. Plenty of guys have stories, don't they? True to life stories. I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, there must have been a lot of movies made from real life. Yeah, here, I suppose here, let so. Let me get that for you. Oh, thank you very much. You know, though, that I have not seen a good Western since Lonely Are the Brave. You remember that movie? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. Kirk Douglas? That was a hell of a movie. You remember that movie, Austin? Yes. A Man Dies for the love of his horse. Is that right? Yeah. See, you hear the horse screaming at the end of it. All right, the rain is coming down. The horse is screaming. And then there's a shot. Just bam. Just a, a single shot like that. And then nothing but the sound of the rain. And Kirk Douglas is riding away in an ambulance. Now, see, Kirk is, is riding away from the scene of this accident. And when he hears that shot, he knows that his horse has died. I mean, he knows. And then you see his eyes, and his eyes die. Now, I mean right inside his face. 
and his eyes close. And you know that he has died too. I mean, you know that Kirk Douglas has died from the death of his horse. Oh, that sounds like a great movie. I'm really sorry well, I missed you, it. You should not have missed that one. Well, maybe I can catch it sometime. Mmm. Arrange a screening or uh -huh. something. You know? Hey, Austin, I think I'd better hit the freeway before the rush hour. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good scene. You, so think, you, yeah. you think there is room for a real Western these days, a, a true life Well, Western? I don't see why we'll not. See. Look, why don't you tell the story to Austin? Have him write a little outline. Huh? <laughs> you mean you would look at it then? For sure, I'd give it a read through. I'm always eager to find new material, huh? God, that is great. You mean you really would read it then? Well, sure, I'd get a read, read through, but it'd only be my opinion, of oh, course. Oh, no, I know. That's all I want, just your opinion. Uh, I mean, you know, I happen to think it has a lot of possibilities. All right, look, it was really great meeting. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll call you tomorrow about the golf. Mm, right. Austin got your number, right? You right. All right, so long, so. So long. Give me the keys. All right, now read that back to me. No, I'm not reading it back to you, Lee. You can read it when we're finished. I can't spend all night on this. You got better things to do? Let's just go ahead. What happens when he leaves Texas? Well, is he ready to leave Texas? I'm sorry we're not that far along. He's not ready to leave Texas yet. He's right at the border. No. Austin, this is one of the crucial parts right here. Yeah, yeah. Now, we can't rush through this thing. No, he's not right at the border. He's a good 50 miles from the border. A lot can happen in Look, 50 this miles. This is only an outline. We're not Austin, writing an entire but we script can't leave, No, we can't leave it out, even if it is only an outline. It is one of the most important parts. We can't go leaving it out. Okay, let's just get it done. All right. All right, now, he's in his truck. Right. And he's got his horse trailer and his horse. Yes, we've already established All that. All right, now, he sees this other guy who is coming up behind him in a, in a truck. And that truck is pulling a gooseneck. What's a gooseneck? Cattle trailer. You know, they come with the gooseneck goes right down the bed of the pickup. All right. It's important. Yes, I got okay, it. Okay, because all of these details are important. I got it. All right, all right. So this guy has got his horse all saddled up in the back of the gooseneck. Right. See? So what? So both of these guys have got their horses right along with them. See? Yes, I understand. All right. Then the first guy suddenly realizes two things. The guy in front? Mm. Right, good. The guy in front did that. Suddenly realizes two things, but almost at the same time, simultaneous. What were the two things? All right, number one. No. Number one. He realizes that the guy who is chasing him is the husband of the woman that he's been And number two, he realizes that he is in the middle. He is in the middle of tornado country. <laughs> What's tornado country? Panhandle. Panhandle. Yeah, see? Sweetwater around in that area. See? Nothing. Nowhere. <laughs> All right. And number three. I thought there were only two. No, there's three. There's a third unforeseen realization. And what's that? Oh, that he's running out of gas. <laughs> come on, Lee. <laughs> what? Well, what do you mean, come on? That's what that is, Dawson. Write that down. He is running out of gas. No, it's too... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's too what? It's too real. 
That is what you mean, isn't it? It is too much like real life. No, that's not like real life. It's not enough like things don't happen like that. What? Men, men don't poke other men's women? Yes, but they don't end up chasing each other across the panhandle through tornado country. Well, they, they do in this movie. They don't have their horses conveniently along with them when they run out of gas. They don't run out of gas either. Hey, these guys run out of gas. This is my story, and one of these guys runs out of gas. It's a, just a dumb excuse to get into a chase scene. It's contrived. It is a chase scene. It's already chase scene. Look at it. They've been chasing each other for days. Yeah, okay, so now they're supposed to abandon their trucks, climb on their little horses, and chase each other into the mountains? Hey! There aren't any mountains in the panhandle. It's flat. God damn these crickets! Shut up out there! God! It is like a fucking rest home here. Now, how am I supposed to think? Wanna take a break? No, I don't wanna take a break. I wanna get this done. This is my last chance to get this okay, done. Hey, take it easy. I am gonna be leaving this area. I do not have the time to hang around here. Where are you going? Hey. Never mind where I'm going, boy. That has got nothing to do with you. I am not like you, hanging around, being a parasite off of other fools. I have got to get the thing done and get out. A parasite? Me? Yeah, you. What, after you break into people's houses and steal their televisions? They don't need their televisions. I am doing them a service. Give me back my keys, Lee. Not until you write that thing, boy. I'll tell you what. You are going to write that outline thing for me, or that car is going to wind up in Arizona with a different paint job. Oh, you think you can force me into writing this? I'm doing you a favor. Get off your high horse, will ya? Favor? Big favor? Now he is handing down his favors from the mountaintop. Let's just write it, okay? Let's just sit down and not get upset and see. Let's just see if we can get through this. Oh. You're not even gonna sell this to him, eh? What? This outline thing, you got no intention of showing this to him. You're just doing this because you're afraid of me. You can show it to him yourself. I will, boy. I'll read it to him on the golf course. I'm not afraid of you either. Then how come you're doing it? So I can get my keys back. There, now you got your keys back. Oh, and there's your keys. Now what are you gonna do, kick me out? I'm not gonna kick you out. You couldn't kick me out, boy. I know. So you can't even consider that one. You you can't call the police. That'd be the obvious thing. You're my brother. Hey, buddy, that don't mean a thing. You go down to that L.A. police department there. You ask them what kind of people kill each other the most. Now, what do you think they would say? Who said anything about killing? Family, people. Brothers, brothers-in-laws, cousins. Real American-type people, buddy. Now, they, they kill each other in the heat, mostly. In uh, the smog alerts and brush fire season right about this time of year. Yeah, this isn't the same. Oh, no? What makes it different? We're not insane! We're not driven acts of violence like that! Not over a dumb movie script! Now, sit down! Hmm. Well, maybe not. Maybe you're right. Maybe we're just too intelligent, huh? I mean, we got heads on our shoulders. Well, one of us even got a Ivy League diploma. Now that means something. Doesn't that mean something? Look, Lee. I'll help you write this thing, okay? I don't mind writing it. I just don't want to get all worked up about it, okay? It's not worth it. Come on. 
Let's just try and get through it, all right? No, I think there's easier money. A lot of ways I can pick up thousands, maybe millions. I don't need this crap. I go up to Sacramento Valley, steal myself a diesel. 10,000 a week for dismantling one of those suckers. 10,000 a week. Oh, really, I'll write it out for you. I think it's a great idea. No, that's okay, you got your own work to do. I don't want to interfere with your life. It'd be fantastic if you'd sell this thing. Turn it into a movie, I mean it. Yeah, you think so, huh? Absolutely, you really turn your life around, you know? You could change things. I could get me a house, maybe? A house? You get a whole ranch if you want to. A ranch? I could get a ranch? Yeah, you have any idea how much a screenplay sells for these days? No, what's it sell for? A lot. A whole lot of money. Thousands? Yeah, thousands. Millions? Well... Hey, we could get the old man out of Hawk then. Yeah, maybe. Maybe? Now, what do you mean, maybe? Well, it might take more than money. Well, you were just telling me how it changed my whole life around. Why wouldn't it change him? He's different. Oh, he's of a different ilk, huh? Look, he's not going to change, Lee. Leave the old oh, man out. No, that's right. He's not going to change, but I will. I'll turn myself just right inside out. I could be just like you then, huh? Getting paid to dream. Just riding back and forth on the freeway, just dreaming my full head off. Yeah, it's not all that easy, buddy. Oh, it's not, huh? No, there's a lot of work involved. Well, what's the toughest part? Deciding whether to jog or play tennis? Okay. Look, you can stay here, okay? You do whatever you want. Come in and out, borrow the car. It doesn't matter to me. It's not my house. I'll help you write this thing or not. You just let me know what you want, okay? You tell me. Uh, so now, suddenly, you're at my service. Is that it? What do you want to do, Lee? I'll tell you what I'd do if I still have that little dog. You wanna know what I'd do? What? Head out to Ventura, cook up a little match. God, that little dog could bear down. There's a lot of money in dog fighting. Big money. Look, why don't we just try and see our way through this, all right? Just for the hell of it. Maybe you really got something here. Come on. What do you think? Well, maybe so. No harm in trying, I guess. You seem to think it's such a hot idea. All right. Besides, I always wonder what it'd be like to be you. You did? Yeah, I did. I used to picture you walking around some campus, your arms full of books, all the blondes chasing after you. Blondes? Yeah. That's funny. What's funny about it? Because I always used to picture you somewhere. Where'd you picture me? I don't know. <sighs> Different places, adventures. You were always on some adventure. Yeah. I used to say to myself, Lee's got the right idea. You know, he's out there in the world. Here I am. What am I doing? Well, you were setting yourself up for something. I guess. Well, we better get started on this thing, then. Okay. Can I get those keys back before I forget? Yeah. You said I could borrow your car if I wanted to. Isn't that why you said? Yeah, yeah, right. I could get me a ranch, huh? Yeah, we have to write it first, though. So. Okay, let's write it. Right. So. They take off after each other. Just straight into a endless black prairie. 
Now the sun is, is just coming down, and they can feel the night on their back. Now what they don't know is that each one of them is afraid, see? See, each one separately thinks that he is the only one that's afraid. And they go on riding like that, just straight into the night, not knowing. And the one who's chasing doesn't know where the other one's taking him. And the one who's being chased doesn't know where he's going. He really liked it, huh? Well, he wouldn't have given me these clubs if he didn't like it. He gave you the clubs? Yeah, I told you. He gave me the clubs, the bag too. I thought he just loaned them to you. No. He said it was part of the advance. Little gift like, gesture of his good faith. He's giving you an advance? Yeah. What's so surprising about that? I told you it was a good story. The, you even said yourself it was a good story. It's really incredible. You have any idea how many guys spend their whole lives down here trying to break into this business? Just trying to get in the door? I got no idea. How many? How much of an advance has he given you? Plenty. We're talking about big money here. Ninth hole is where I sealed the deal. He made a firm commitment? Absolutely. Well, I know Saul. He doesn't fool around when he says he likes him. I thought you said you didn't know him. I'm familiar with his taste. Well, I let him get two up on me going into the back nine, see? He thought he had me cold. Well, he should have seen his face when I whip out the old pitching wedge. And I plop her pin high two feet from the cup. He about pooped his pants. He says, Now, where did a guy like you ever learn how to play golf like that? <laughs> yeah, of course, there's no contract yet. Nothing's final until it's on paper, you know. Uh, it's final, all right. There's no way he can back out of it now. We gambled for him. Saul gambled? Yeah, sure. He liked that outline already, so he wasn't risking that much. I just guaranteed it with my short game. <laughs> but we ought to have a little celebration or something. I think Mom left a bottle of champagne in the fridge. Yeah, we'll have a little toast. You should not have taken her champagne, Austin. Don't. She's going to miss that. Oh, come on, she's not going to mind. She'll be glad we put it to good use. I'll get her another bottle. Besides, it's perfect for the occasion, right? Yeah. Now, you are going to get a nice fee for writing that script, of course. Straight fee. I'm writing the script. That's what he said. He said, we could not hire a better screenwriter in this whole town. Uh, yeah, well, I'm already working on a script. I got my own project. I don't have time to write two scripts. No, he said he's going to drop that other one. What? You mean mine? He's going to drop mine and do yours instead? Well, look, Austin, it's just beginner's luck. I mean, you know, hell, I sank a 50-foot putt for the deal. No hard feeling. Wait a minute. Well, he's not going to be in, Austin. He told me he wouldn't be in until later on this afternoon. I can't believe this. I can't believe Are you sure that's what he's... Why would he drop mine? That's what he told me. Yeah, well, he can't do that without telling me first, without talking to me. Well... He wouldn't make a decision like that without talking to me. I was kind of surprised myself, but he was really enthusiastic about my story. What'd he say? Tell me everything you said. Austin, I've been telling you. He said he liked my story a whole lot. He said it was the first authentic Western to come along in a decade. Whoa, he liked that story? Your story? Yeah. Now, what is so amazing about that? It's stupid! Hey. It's the dumbest story I've ever heard in my life! Hold on. That's my story you're talking about. No, it's a bullshit story. It's idiotic. Two lame brains chasing each other across Texas. Are you kidding? Who do you, who do you think's gonna go see a film like that? It's not a film. It's a movie. There is a big, big difference, Austin. That is something Saul told me. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah. He said, in this business, we make movies. American movies. Leave the films to the French. <laughs> oh, oh, so you just got real intimate with old Saul, huh? And you just started pouring forth his vast knowledge of cinema? Yeah. I think he liked me a lot, to tell you the truth. I, th I think he felt like I was somebody he could confide in. What'd you do, beat him up or something? Hey! 
I have about had it with the insults, buddy. Now, what do you think? That you're the only one in the brain department here? You're the only one can sit around and cook stuff up? Well, there's other people got ideas, too, you know? You must have done something to him, threatened him or something. Now, what'd you do, Lee? I convinced him! Jesus, you didn't hurt him, did you? Lee, did you hurt him? Boy, I didn't do nothing to him. He liked my story, pure and simple. He said it was the best story that he had come across in a long, long time. Lee, that's what he said about my story. He said the same thing then to me. he must have been lying. Must have been lying to one of us, anyway. You cannot come into this town and start pushing people around. They're going to put you away. I never pushed anybody around. I beat him fair and square. They can't touch me, anyway. They can't put a finger on me. I'm gone. I come in through the window. I go out through the door. They never knew what hit him. You, you're stuck. You're the one that's stuck, not me. So don't be warning me what to do in this town, boy. Lee, come on. Just level with me, will you? I mean, it doesn't make any sense that he'd suddenly throw my idea out the window. I've been meeting with him for months. I've got too much at stake here. Everything is riding on this project. What is your idea? It's just a simple love story. What kind of love story? I'm not telling you. Ha! You're afraid I'll steal it, huh? Ooh, competition getting too close to home now. Nah, Where'd Salt was going? Salt well, City's gonna be taking my story around to a couple studios. Hey, that's my outline, you know. I wrote that outline. You got no right to be peddling around. Well, you weren't ready to take credit for it last night. Give me my keys back. What? My keys. I want my keys back. Where are you going? Just give me my keys. I want to take a drive. I want to get out of here for a while. Where are you going to go, Austin? I might just drive out to the desert for a while. I got to think. <laughs> you can think here just as good, boy. This is a perfect setup for thinking. We have got some writing to do here, boy. So we are just gonna have ourselves a little toast. Relax. We're partners now. Now you tell him. You tell him, Mr. Kipper. Kimmer. Uh, Kimmer, now you tell him what you told me. He don't believe me. I don't wanna hear it. But it's really not a big issue, Austin. I was simply amazed by your brother's hey. story. Amazed? You lost a bet. You gambled with my material. Now, that's beside the point, Austin. I am ready to go all the way with your brother's story. I think it has a great deal of merit. Look, I don't want to hear about it, OK? Go tell it to the executives. Tell it to somebody who's going to turn it into a package deal or something, a TV series. Don't tell it to me. But I want to continue with your project, too. It's not as though we can't do both. We're big enough for that, aren't we, Austin? We? Saul, I can't do both. I don't know about we. See? What did I tell you? He's totally unsympathetic. Austin, there is no point now in looking for another screenwriter. It doesn't make any sense. You're brothers. You know each other. There's a familiarity with the material. It just wouldn't be possible no, otherwise. Saul, there's no familiarity with the material. None. I don't know what tornado country is. I don't know what a gooseneck is. I don't, I don't want to know. He's a hustler. He's a bigger hustler than you are, Saul. Hey! Now, I didn't have to bring this bone back to you, Bowser. I persuaded Saul here that you were the right man for the job. Don't go throwing up favors in my face, boy. Well, favors? I'm the one who wrote the outline. You can't even spell. Now, look, your brother told me about the situation with your father. What? That's right. Now, look, we have got a clear-cut deal here. We have got big studio money standing behind this thing just on the basis of your outline. What do he tell you about my father? That he's destitute, he needs money? That's right, Saul, he does. Oh, 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 this little assignment's supposed to go toward the old man, huh? A charity project, is that what this is? You cook this up on the ninth green, too? It's a big slice, Austin. Look, I gave him money. 
I already gave him money, you know that. He drank it all up. This is a different deal here. That's right. We can set up a trust for your father, a large sum of money. It can be doled out to him in parcels so he can't misuse yeah, it. Yeah, who's doing the doling? Your brother volunteered. <laughs> okay. That's right. I'll make sure he uses it for groceries. I'm not doing the script, okay? I'm not gonna write this crap for you or anybody else, Saul. You can't blackmail me into it. You can't threaten me into it. There's no way I'm doing it. Just give it up, both of you. Okay, that's it then. I mean, it is an easy 300 grand just for a first draft. It's incredible, Austin. We have got three different studios all trying to cut each other's throats just to get this material in one morning. That's how hot it is. Yeah, well, then you can afford to give me a percentage on the outline then. Better get the genius here an agent before he gets burned. Saul's gonna be my agent. Isn't that right, Saul? That's right, Austin. Your brother has really got something. I've been around too long not to recognize that. Raw talent. Uh, he's got a lot of balls is what he's got. He's taking you right down the river. 300,000, Austin, just for a first draft. You've never been offered that kind of money before. I'm not writing it. I see. Well, wow. well, we're just gonna have to go to another screenwriter then, right, so? I mean, we gotta hire us somebody with some enthusiasm, somebody who can recognize the value of a good story. I'm sorry about this, Austin. Yeah. I was hoping that we could continue with both things, but I just don't see how it's possible now. So you're just dropping my idea altogether, huh? Is that it? Just trade horses in midstream after all these months of meetings. I wish there were another Look, way. I have got everything riding on this, Saul. You know that! This is my only shot here if this falls through. I have to go with what my instincts tell me. Your instincts? My gut reaction. Oh, you lost! That is your gut reaction? You lost the gamble! What, now you're trying to tell me you like his story? How, how can you possibly fall for that story, Saul? It's as phony as Hopalong Cassidy! Can, can, what do you see in it? I'm curious. It has the ring of truth, Austin. <laughs> truth? It is true. Something uh, about the real West. Yeah, why? Because it's got horses? Because it's got grown men acting like little boys? What? Something about the land. Your brother is speaking from experience. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, but nobody's interested in love these days, Austin. Let's face it. That's true, Saul. Saul. He has been camped out on the desert for three months talking to cactus. I mean, what's he know what people want to see on the screen? I drive the freeway every day. I, I, I swallow the smog. I watch the news in color. I shop at the Safeway. Come on, I'm the one who's in touch, not him. I have to go now, Austin. There's no such thing as the West anymore. It's a dead issue. It's dried up, so. So are you. Well, maybe you're right, but I've got to take the gamble, don't I? You're a fool to do this, Saul. I've always gone on my hunches, Austin. Always. I've never been wrong. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Lee. All right, Mr. Kimmer. Maybe we can have some lunch. Well, that's fine with me. I'd love to. I'll give you a ring. All right, Between you, the coyotes, and the crickets, a thought don't have much of a chance. Between me, the coyotes, and the crickets, what a great title. I don't need a title. I need a thought. A thought. Here's a thought for you. I am not asking for your thoughts. I have got my own. I can do this thing on my own. Oh, you're going to write an entire script on your own? <laughs> That's right!
here's a thought for you. Saul Kimmer. Shut up, William. <laughs> he thinks that we're the same person. Hey, don't get cute. <laughs> he does. He's lost his mind. Poor old Saul. He thinks that we're one and the same. Hey, <laughs> why don't you ease up on that champagne? Hey, this isn't champagne anymore. We went through the champagne a long time ago. This is serious stuff now, boy. The days of champagne are long gone. Well, go outside and drink it, then. Well, I'm enjoying your company, Lee. <laughs> For the first time since your arrival, I'm finally enjoying your company. Now you want me to go outside and drink alone? Yeah, that's right! Go! <laughs> you think you'll make more progress if you're alone? You might drive yourself crazy. Yeah, I could do this <laughs> one night if I had a little silence. Yo, you still have the crickets to contend with. The coyotes, the sounds of the police helicopters prowling above the neighborhood. Flashing their searchlights down through the streets, hunting for the likes of you. I am a screenwriter now. <laughs> I am legitimate. Well, a screenwriter. Yeah, that's right. Oh. I <laughs> am on salary. Ha, 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 ha. I have got the big advance coming. Ha, 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 ha. This is true. This is very true. In advance. Well, maybe I ought to go outside and try my hand at your trade since you're doing so good at mine. Ha! Why not? What, you don't think that I've got what it takes to sneak into people's houses and steal their TVs? You couldn't steal a toaster without losing your lunch. You don't think that I could sneak into somebody's house and steal a toaster? Austin, just go take a shower or something, right. will you? Yeah, you? Go! You really don't think that I could steal a crummy toaster? How much you want to bet that I can't steal a toaster? Huh? Come on, how much? Come on. You're the gambler, aren't you? How much you willing to put on the line, boy? Hmm? Some part of your big advance? Oh, oh, yes, we haven't got the advance yet, have we? I forgot. Ooh. Okay, oh, okay, okay. I will bet you your car that you can't steal a toaster without getting busted. You already got my car. Okay, your house, then. What are you gonna give me? I'm not talking about my house and my car. I'm talking about what are you gonna give me? You don't have nothing to give I me. I will day. give you shared screen credit. How would that be? I will have it put in the contract that this was written by the both of us. I don't want my name on that piece of shit. <laughs> hey! Ooh. I want something of value. You got anything of value, boy? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no. Ooh, Will, Will, you got any tidbits from the desert? <laughs> oh, you got, hey, you got any rattlesnake bones? <laughs> I'm not a greedy man, Lee. Any personal treasure will suffice, boy. I am gonna kick your ass out in one Oh, no, you're gonna kick me out of one. Now I'm the intruder, eh? Oh, yes, I'm the one invading your precious privacy. Eh? I am trying to do some screenwriting here! You got plenty of coffee? That's good. You got groceries? You got the car, the contract? You might need a new typewriter ribbon, but other than that, I think you're pretty well fixed. I'll just leave you alone for a while. Where are you going? Hey, don't worry about me. I'm not the one to worry about. Well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Just go wander out into the night. Oh, I'm gonna make a little tour. Austin, go to bed for God's <laughs> sakes! You make me sick! Hey, do you want me to call your wife or something? Oh, my wife? Yeah, 
because I think there's something seriously wrong with you. Maybe she can help you out. Talk to you or something. Uh, she's 500 miles away. She's north, north of here. She's up there in the north country where things are calm. Yeah, well, I don't need any help. I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna steal me a toaster. <laughs> I might just steal some other stuff, too. Boy, hey, I might just commit bigger crimes. Bigger than you ever dreamed of, boy. Crimes beyond the imagination. Austin, just hang on a hey, minute. Why? What for? You don't need my help, Rice. You got a handle on the project. Besides, I'm looking forward to the smells of the night. The bushes. Orange blossoms. The dust in the driveway. Rainbird sprinklers. The lights in people's houses. You were right about the lights, Lee. Everybody else is living the life. Indoors safe. It's a paradise down here. You know that, boy? Hey, we're living in a paradise here. Oh, oh we've forgotten about that. You sound just like the old man now. Oh, yeah, well, we all sound alike when we're slashed. We <laughs> just sort of echo each other. Well, Austin, maybe if we could work on this thing together, we could get him out here. Get him settled down somewhere. Hey, I don't want him out here. I'm had it with him. I went out there. I went out of my way out there. I gave him money. All he did was... Play Al Jolson records and spit at me! I gave him money. Just give me a little help with the characters. All right, Austin, you know how to do it. <laughs> The characters? The way they talk and stuff. I can hear it in my head, but I can't get it down on paper. Uh, what characters? Austin, the guys. The guys in my story. Hey, those aren't characters. Well, whatever you call them, Austin, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, those are illusions of characters. Austin, I don't give a damn what you call them. I have got to write something hey, out. Those are fantasies of a long-lost boyhood. <laughs> I have got to write something out on paper! <laughs> what for? Saul's gonna get your fancy screenwriter, isn't he? I wanna do it myself. Mm. Do it. You're on your own now, old buddy. You bulldogged your way into contention. Now you got to carry it through. Boy. I will! <laughs> but I need some advice. Come on. Just a couple things. Come on, just help me get them talking right. It won't take much. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, boy, you're having a little doubt, huh? Just having a little doubt. What happened? The pressure is on, boy. This is it. You got to come up with it now. Hey, you don't come up with a winner your first time out. They chop your head off. Hey, they don't give you a second Austin, chance. Austin, I know. have got a good story. I know it is a good story. I just need a little help is all. Oh, not from me. Not from your little old brother. I'm retired. Come on, Austin. <laughs> you can save this thing for me. I'll give you half the money. Oh, no. I would. <laughs> come on, I only need half anyway. With that kind of money, I could be a long time down the road. Austin, I would never bother you again. I promise you'd never even see me again. You'd disappear? I would for sure. Where would you disappear to? Austin, that don't matter. I got plenty of places. <clears throat> Nobody can disappear. The old man tried that. Look where it got him. He lost his teeth. He never had any money. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about his teeth. His real teeth. First he lost his real teeth, then he lost his false teeth. Oh, you never knew about that, did you? He never confided in you. No, I never knew about it. You want a drink?
Yeah, he lost all his teeth. One at a time, woke up every morning. There's another tooth laying on the mattress. And finally, he decides he's gonna get them all pulled out. But he doesn't have any money, you know. Middle of Arizona, no money, no insurance. And every morning, there's another tooth laying on the mattress. So what does he do? Well, I don't know. I never knew about it. He begs the government. This GI Bill or some damn thing, some pension plan he got in the back of his head. They send him out the money. They did? Yeah. But it isn't enough money, you know. It costs a lot to have all your teeth yanked. They charge by the individual tooth, you know. I mean, one tooth isn't equal to another tooth. Some are more expensive. Like the big ones in the back. You can get those suckers pulled out. You gotta have a lot of cash, because they're gonna take you for... Austin? So what happened? Uh, oh, he... Well, he locates this Mexican dentist. <laughs> down in Juarez, who do the whole thing for a song. And then he takes off hitchhiking to the border. Hitchhike? How long do you think it takes him to get to the border? A man his age. I don't know. Eight days it takes him. What? <laughs> Eight days in the rain and the sun, you know. And every day, he's dropping teeth on the blacktop. Nobody will pick him up because his mouth's full of blood. <laughs> so... Finally, he stumbles into the dentist. And the dentist takes all his money, all his teeth, and there he is in Mexico with his gums sewed up and his pockets empty. <laughs> Was that it? And I go out there to see him, see? I go out there, I take him out for a nice Chinese dinner. Oh, but he doesn't eat, you know. All he wants to do is drink martinis out of plastic cups. He takes his teeth out and lays them on the table because he can't stand the feel of them. And he asks a waitress for a doggy bag to take the chop suey home in, takes his teeth, and then lays them in the doggy bag along with the chop suey. So we go out. We just go out. We hit all the bars up and down the highway. He says he wants to introduce me to his buddies. And in one of those bars, one of those bars, up and down that highway, he left that doggy bag with his teeth just laying in the chop suey. Well, you never found it? We went back, but we never did find it. That's a true story. It's true to life. right? Yeah, you don't even entertain that. Is that the right psychology? What? Is that the correct criminal psychology, not to think of the victims? The victims. What? The victims of crime! Breaking and entering, boy! This is a prerequisite for a criminal not to have a conscience. That's too criminal. <laughs> Oh, 
Come on. <laughs> Yo, hey, oh, 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 let's get go. Oh, hey. Whoa, 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 goodbye. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here you go, boy. Go. Oh, come on, boy. Through the fire. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, get up there. Boy. Oh, yeah. Hey, good boy. <laughs> come on, here's your brother. <laughs> I've got hundreds of dollars of household appliances here, boy. Oh, 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 you may not realize yeah, that. Yeah, and how many hundreds of dollars did you walk right yes. past? It was toasters you challenged me to. Only I toasters. I, I ignored every other temptation. That's no challenge. Anybody can get out and steal some toasters. You don't have to take it out of my typewriter. It's the machine's fault that you can't write. It's in this to do that to a good machine. A sin? Yeah. When you consider all the writers that never even had a machine who would have given an eyeball for a good typewriter. Any typewriter. All those writers who wrote on paper bags and matchbook covers. Toilet paper. And their writing destroyed by their jailers who persisted beyond all odds. Those writers would find it hard to understand your actions. Ah! Yeah, not to mention demolishing a perfectly good golf club. What about all the struggling golfers? <laughs> what about Lee Trevino? No. Now, what do you think that Lee would have said? He was out there batting balls around with broomsticks at the age of nine, impoverished. Oh! <laughs> Let's get the big fella here. What the hell time is it? Hey, I got no idea, boy. Time stands still when you're having fun. Well, is it too late to call a woman? You know any women? Hey, I'm a married man. Austin, I mean a local woman. Hey, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> mm. it's too late or too early. Hey, you're the nature enthusiast, aren't you? Huh? Can't you tell the time by the... The light in the sky. Yeah, go on. Get out there. Come on. Orient yourself around the North Star or something. What? Oh, I can't tell anything. You, you go on. You get out. Oh, oh maybe you need a little breakfast. <laughs> Some toast? <laughs> Austin, I don't need some toast. I need a woman. Oh, hey, a woman isn't the answer. It, it never was. I am not talking about permanent. I am talking about temporary. No, no, no. We are just going to test the merits of these little demons. We're going to see which brands have that tendency to burn, and then we'll see which ones can produce a perfectly golden piece of fluffy toast. <laughs> How much gas you got in your car? Well, you know, I haven't driven my car for days now, so uh, um, I just haven't had the opportunity to look at the gas gauge. Then today. take a guess. Do you think there's enough gas to get me to Bakersfield? Bakersfield? <laughs> what's in Bakersfield? Austin, never mind what's in Bakersfield. Do you think there is enough goddamn gas in your car? Sure! Sure. Yeah, you could care less, right? Just let me run out of gas on the grapevine. You could give a shit. Hey, I'd say there's enough gas to get you just about anywhere, Lee. With your determination and guts. <laughs> what the hell time is it anyway? Hey, it's very early. 
It's the time of the morning when the coyotes kill people's Yaker Spaniels. You hear them out there? That's what they're doing out there. Luring innocent pets away from their homes. Who? What's that, what's that area called for Baker's Field, you know? You call the operator. I can't stand that voice they give you. What voice? That voice that warns you if you'd only tried harder to find that number in the phone book, you would never even have to be calling us operators to begin with. Hey, I don't know why you want to talk to anyone else anyway. Come on, talk to me. I'm your brother. <laughs> I want to talk to a woman, homo. Okay? I haven't heard a woman's voice in a long time. Oh, not since you're botanist? What? Oh, nothing. Red sails. Boy, out on the blue. Please carry my loved one. Home safely to me. Red sail in the sun, dead. Way out on the blue. Please carry my loved one. What? Knock it off, will ya? It's long distance here. Bakersfield? Yeah, Bakersfield. It's in Kern County. What county are we in? Hey, you better get yourself a 7-Up, boy. Operator, hello. Go on! Operator, hello. Hey, one county is as good as another. Yeah, boy. operator. Yeah. Yes. First off, I want to know that area code for Bakersfield. Bakersfield, huh? sir? Bakersfield? Yeah, that's right. Bakersfield. All right. All right, that is in our county. I can help you on that. OK, good. All right, what can I do for you, sir? Now, I wonder if you can help me track somebody down. Well, you need the huh? address, sir? No, I don't, address? operator. I mean a phone number. All right. Just a phone number, OK? All right, sir. OK? All right, sir. What is the name? OK. What is the name, sir? The name is Melly Ferguson. What? Huh? What? Melly. Melly? Melly? I don't know. Maybe. What's her yeah, name? Me Melanie? Uh, maybe Melanie. Melanie. All right. Melanie uh, operator, OK. OK. Melanie Ferguson. Melanie Ferguson. Sir, you're going to have to speak up. I can't hear you. What? I can't hear you, sir. Uh -huh. More clearly. Well, I can't hear you so good. It sounds like you're under the ocean. All right, sir. I'll check on the name. Hold on one second. Ferguson. Ferguson. Melanie Ferguson? I have ten <laughs> listings for Melanie Ferguson in Bakersfield. You got ten Melanie Ferguson? Yes, sir. I have ten Melanie Ferguson. Now, how can that be? I don't know, sir. I don't write the book. Now, you ten. are going to sit there yes, and sir. tell me you've got ten Melanie, Melanie Ferguson's in just in Bakersfield? Yes, you have an all address, right. sir. Well, just give me all ten of them, then. I, I, sir, I Operator, I now, don't go I, weird on me. Just sir. give me all ten of them, then. Well, okay? I'll, okay, hang on one second. Uh, get me a pen, boy. Right, Come on, number, pen! Pen! I don't have a pen. Then get me a pencil, then. Come on! Well, I don't have a pencil! <laughs> You're a writer, and you don't have a pen or a pencil? Hey, I'm not the writer, boy. You're the writer. Austin, I am on the phone here! Oh. Now get me a pen or pencil! I gotta watch the toast! Hang on a second, operator.
Was she hung up? Yes, Austin, she hung up. No, you don't think I knew she was going to hang up? I could hear it in her voice. Well, you're probably better off staying here with me anyway, Lee. Well, I'll take care of you, boy. I don't need taken care of. Not by you, anyway. Well, come on, all this toast is almost ready. I don't want any toast! Something. You can't just drink. How long have we been drinking, anyway? Maybe it was Fresno. Hey. What was that area code for Fresno? How could I have lost that number? God, she was beautiful. Come on, just forget about that, Lee. Just forget about the woman. She had green eyes. You know what green eyes do to me? Yeah, I know. Then shut up. You're not gonna get it on with her now, anyhow. It's dawn already. She's in Bakersfield, for Christ's sake. Yeah. It's dawn. Yep. Come on, let's just have us some toast and... Hey! Hey! Now what is it with the toast? Huh? You are making that toast sound like salvation or something. But... I do not want, see it? No, do not want any goddamn toast. Now how many times have I got to tell you that? Well, it is like, it is like salvation, sort of. The smell and everything. Oh, my God, I love the smell of toast. Sun's coming up. It makes you feel like anything's possible, you know? So go to church, why don't you then? Like a beginning. I love beginnings. Mm, well, I've always been kind of parcel of endings myself. What if I come with you, Lee? What if I come with you out to the desert? Are you kidding? No. No, I'd like, I'd like to see what it's like. You wouldn't last a day out there, oh, Pat. Oh, come on! That's what you said about 
the toasters. You said I couldn't steal a toaster either. A toaster has got nothing to do with the desert. Look, I'm not that helpless, Lee. I can make it. I can cook. Cook? I can. So what? You can cook. Toast. No, I can make fires. I can get fresh water from condensation. Hey, Austin, it's not something you learn out of Boy Scout hands. Yeah, well, how do you learn it then? How are you you supposed just to learn, it? learn it. That's all. You learn it because you have to learn it. You don't have to. No, learn. you can teach me. God, are you crazy? Huh? You went to college. Yeah, here you are down here, rolling in bucks, floating up and down in elevators, and you want to learn how to live on the. Yes, yeah, I do, Lee. There's nothing down here for me. There never was. When we were kids here, it was different. There was a life here then. Now, now I keep coming down here like it's the 50s or something. I get off the freeway at familiar landmarks. They turn out to be unfamiliar. On my way to the, these appointments, I wander down streets. I thought I recognized. They turn out to be replicas of streets, I remember. Streets I misremember. Streets I don't know if I lived on them or if I saw them in a postcard. <laughs> Fields that just don't exist anymore. Well, there is no point in crying about that now. There's nothing real down here, Lee! Least of all me! Well, don't... I can't save you from that. Yeah, yeah, you can let me come with no, you. No, No, Lee, let me come with you. Hey, let me, hey. Now, do you actually think that I choose to live out in the middle of nowhere? Huh? Do you think it's some kind of philosophical decision I took? Boy, I live out there because I can't make it here. And here you are, bitching to me about all your success. Uh, Lee, I'd cash it all in in a second. Now, that's the truth, please. I can't believe it. Let me come with you. Stop saying that, will you? You are worse than a dog. You want some toast? <laughs> Tell you what I'll do, little brother. I will consider making you a deal. A little, uh, trade lock. Now, you wrap me up that screenplay thing. Just like I tell you, boy. I mean, you can use your usual tricks and stuff. Your, uh, fancy language. Your artistic hocus pocus. But you had better write down everything, like I say, boy. Every move. Because every time that they run out of gas, they'll run out of gas. If they want to jump on a horse, they will do just that. If they want to stay inside Texas, by God, They'll stay inside Texas. Now you finish up that whole thing for me. Top to bottom. You put my name on it. I own all the rights. And every dime goes in my pocket. 
No, you do all that for me. And I will, sure enough, take you with me to the desert. How does that sound? It's a deal. All right, now read that back to me. Read that back wait, to just me. Just a second. Austin, come on. Just read what we got. Wait, wait, I can't keep up. It's not the same Austin, as if I had a typewriter. Just read what we got so far. Forget about the ref. All right. Luke says, I told you. Who? Luke. Luke? Luke who? His name is Luke? Yeah. All right, all right, we'll change the names later. Come on, what'd he say, what'd he say? He says, I told you you were a fool to follow me in here. I know this prairie like the back of my hand. No, I never said that, Austin. I never said that crap, the back of my hand. That's stupid. That's what I wrote. That is not what I said, Austin. Yeah. I never said that. That is one of those, that is. That is what that is, Austin. That is one of those, what do you call? What? What do you call that? What? Austin, now what do you call that? That's something that has been said a thousand times before. Now, what do you call that? What do you call that? What? Huh? Uh, a cliche? You, a quiche? Cliche? Cli yeah, a cliche. Yeah. Well, that is what that is, Austin, well, the cliche. You know, the back of my hand, my butt. It's what you say! That is not what I said, boy. I never said that. And even if I did, that is where you were supposed to have come in. That's what? right. That is right where you were supposed to have come in. Then you would change it to something better. Uh, how, how am I supposed to do that and write down what you say at the I, same time? You just do. That's all. You hear the stupid line, you change it, OK? That that is your job! All right, now what are, what are, what are we changing? I'm not changing it. I'm trying to catch up. Austin, change it. Um. Change it. Hey, change it. Change it. Change it. Change it. I will not have that in there like that! It's too dumb. Go on. Go on. How about... I'm on intimate terms with this prairie. I'm on in intimate terms with this parrot. 
I'm in, I'm on intimate term with this prairie. Intimate terms. Intimate terms. And that that mean like sexual, right? Say <laughs> Well, yeah. Or well, it now he is on sexual terms with the prairie. <laughs> now, how do you figure that? No, it Explain doesn't. Them. It doesn't necessarily have to mean sexual. Okay. Could... Okay. Then what does it mean? Close personal. Okay. Uh, then then put it back into the line there, and then we can see how it sounds. I told you you were a fool to follow me in here. I'm on intimate terms with this prairie. That is good. I like that. That's real good. You like that? Yeah, don't you? Sure. You sure. don't like that? That sounds original now. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, come on, it does. Now we are cook cooking. <laughs> okay. Now come on, buddy, you come like on. That? Yeah. <laughs> now that has got some the real ring to it. <laughs> Here, get you. Thanks. Dude, I, t I, t what? I told you that you were a fool well, I, to follow me in here. Who? Because I, I am on intimate, intimate terms with, with this, this prairie. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, that is it. See, that, 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 see what it, that was sounding real mysterious. But it is pretty threatening at the same time. <laughs> I can't wait. Wait, I gotta, I gotta finish this. Wait a minute. <laughs> over, over, my, my, me, me, so. Mom, we. <laughs> Mom, what are you doing back? I'm back. Here, Mom, let me take those for you. Coming back so soon, Ma. <laughs> How's Alaska? See any igloos? No, just glaciers. Oh, well, it's cold, huh? <laughs> what? Must have been cold up there. Not really. Well, it must have been colder than this here, Mom. We've been having a real scorcher here. Oh, yeah. Oh? Yeah. It must be up in the hundreds. Hey, you want me to take your coat there, Ma? No. What happened in here? We we're just sort of celebrating. Celebrating? Yeah. Lee sold a screenplay. A, a, a story, I mean. Lee did? Yeah. yeah. Not you? No, not him. You sold a screenplay? Yes, we was finishing up right now, Mom. That's what we was doing here. You, me and Lee are going out to the desert to live. You and Lee? Yeah. I'm taking off with Lee. You gonna go live with your father? No, we're going to a different desert, Ma. 
Oh, I see. Well, you'll probably end up in the same desert sooner or later. What are all those toasters doing in here? Just had kind of a contest, Ma. Contest? Yeah. 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 Lee won. Did you win a lot of money, Lee? Well, not yet, Mom, but it's coming in any day now. Yeah. What happened to your shirt? Well, I was sweating like a pig, Mom, so I took it off. One hell of a mess in here, isn't it? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Say, so, yeah, I... I'm gonna get everything fixed up for you here, Mom. I just didn't know you were coming back so soon. But what happened? Mm, nothing. I just started missing all my plants and... Oh. They're all dead, aren't they? Didn't get a chance to water them, I guess. Oh, well, Mom. I, I was doing it, you know, and then Lee came down and we... He was doing it, got... Mom. And then I came. And I was distracting him a whole lot here. Mom, it's not his fault. Well, it's one less thing to take care of, I guess. That reminds me. You two will probably never guess who's in town. Try and guess. What do you mean, Mom? Take a guess. A very important person has come to town. I read it coming down on the Greyhound. A very important person? Mm -hmm. See if you can guess. You'll never Mom, guess. Mom, we're, we're trying to Picasso! Picasso's in town! Isn't that incredible? Right now. Picasso is dead, Mom. No, he's not dead. He's visiting the museum. I read it on the bus. We have to go down and no. see him. Mom. Oh, it's a just... chance in a lifetime. Why, just imagine. We can all go down and meet him. All three of us. Mom. No. Mom, I'll tell you what. Did you ever get a feeling that you just weren't really up for meeting anybody? What is this guy's name? Picasso! Picasso! Haven't you ever heard of Picasso? <laughs> Austin, you've heard of Picasso. No, no Mom, we're not going to have time. Oh, it'll yeah. only take a minute. We hop in the car and we no. get right down there. An opportunity like this doesn't come along every day. We're going to be leaving here, Mom. Oh. Yeah. You're both leaving? Well, we were thinking about that before, but... No, we are. No. We're both leaving. We got it all planned. Well, you can't leave. You have a family. No, I'm leaving, Mom. I'm getting out of here. I don't think Austin's cut out for the desert, do you, Mom? No, he's not. No, I'm going with you, Lee. He's too thin. I know. He just burn up out there. No. Oh. Hey, we just... We just got to finish the screenplay, and then we're going to take off. Come on, that's the plan. That's what you said. Let's just get back to work here. I can't work under these conditions here. It is too hot. Well, then we'll do it on the desert. Hey! Don't be telling me what we are going to do, boy. Don't shout in the house. We are just going to have to postpone the whole deal. No, I can't postpone it. It's gone past postponing. Look, I, I was writing down everything you said, Lee. I wrote down exactly what you told me. But you were right, see? It is a dumb story. Two lame brains chasing each other across Texas. Now, that is what you said. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> Mom, I'm gonna have to borrow uh, a few of your antiques. You don't mind, do you? Just some plates and things. You don't Where? have any utensils on the desert? No, Mom, I'm fresh out. What are you doing? Well, some of those are real old, bone china. Yeah, I know, Mom, and I'm tired of eating out of my bare hands, you know? What are you doing? We made a deal! Well, could you borrow some of the plastic ones? I have plenty now, of Now, Mom! Plastic is not the same, Mom. Now, plastic Lee. is not the same at all. I need something authentic, Mom. Lee. Something to keep me in touch. It is easy to get out of touch. Lee. 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 You can't just drop the whole thing. You boys shouldn't fight in the house. Go outside if you're going to fight. Mom, did you see me fighting? No! No! 
I am leaving. There's been enough damage done around here I am already. clearing out of here once and for all. Mom. Now, all this town does, all it does is just drive a man insane. Would you look at what it's done to Austin there? I am not going to let that happen to me, Mom. No, sir. Just sell myself down the river. I would rather be 100 miles from nowhere than let that happen to me. Ah! You're not going anywhere! You're not taking anything with you! You're not taking the car! You're not taking the dishes! You're not taking anything, boy! You're staying right here! You've got to stop fighting in the house. There's plenty of room outside to fight. You have the whole outdoors to fight. Take the keys off me! Give me my keys back! Take them off! You're not killing him, are you? I don't know if I'm killing him. I'm just stopping him. That's all, just stopping him. Well, you ought to let him breathe a little bit. Take the keys off me! Yes. <laughs> read me those keys, would you, Ma? Why are you doing this to him? Just read me the keys, would you? Not until you stop choking him. No, I can't stop choking him. He'll kill me if I stop choking him. Well, he won't kill you. He's your brother. No, just read me the keys, would you? I'll put him in my back pocket. Now, will you let him go? I don't know. He's not going to let me get out of here, Ma. Well, you can't kill him. Yeah, I can kill him. I can easily kill him. Right here, right now, all I got to do is tighten up. Yeah, you see that? Well, that's a savage thing to do. Yeah, well, don't tell me I can't kill him, because I can. I can just twist. Just keep twisting. Austin. I'm going to the desert, boy. There's nothing stopping me. I'm going by myself to the desert. Well, I'm going to go check into a motel. I can't stand this anymore. No, no, go yet. I can't stay here. This is worse than being homeless. You no, know, I'll get everything fixed up for you, Mom. I promise to stay a while. Well, you're going to the desert. No, just wait. It was the worst feeling being up there yeah. in Alaska, staring out the window. I never felt so desperate before. That's why when I read that article about Picasso, I thought that no, I could No, stay just... here, Mom. This is where you live. Well, I don't recognize it at all. No, no, Mom. Ma. And Lee, and Lee, I'll make you deal, all right? Just let me get to my car. Just give me a little head start and I'll turn you loose, all right? Just give me a little head start. Lee.
gotta understand when the Lord made me, He made a rambling man. Some folks might say that I. God.